Thank you, Stephen, for joining us today. Received a lot of questions for you, so here is question number one. What do you see as the role of the visual arts in our mass-mediated world and particularly in your profession? Thank you for having me, Deleen. I have numerous professions. I am a writer, a director, a composer, and an educator, general education, and specializing in the arts. The visual arts play a huge part in the work of a director, obviously. Set and art design, costume design and the rest play a crucial part in the developing of any production, and a director who can't work well with these aspects of visual arts is going to fail. I don't have any critical usages for the visual arts as an educator that I can think of, except when I teach directors and some other artists. New communications and media technologies, imagery is almost instantly available. Do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the industry? Provide example. We live in an age when everyone and anyone can work with tools that at one time would have been the domain of the trained artist. This is a good and a bad thing, I think. It means that almost everyone can and does play with art, and a lot more art is created. But it also means that anyone and everyone can create art, and a lot of it is of a very poor quality. Instant availability is great for broadcasting news and important events, but art generally requires some development and time. The internet is loaded with lousy artistic renderings by complete amateurs, and their products are not good. YouTube, in particular, provides examples of garbage in filmmaking beyond imagining. But sometimes, a work will establish itself that may be worthy of attention. Overall, I think it's a wise thing for an artist to have to make an effort to create something wonderful. What popular images do you see that are frequently rechanneled throughout the entertainment industry? Product images are placed endlessly in art now, thanks to movies. TV, and Andy Warhol. The whole vampire in everything has been wildly overexposed in the media, and I hope will die soon. Are there particular images that this industry has popularized and are created? Again, certain products, cigarettes, were popularized by the industry. In films of the 30s, you saw actors and actresses you admired smoking and drinking ceaselessly. Who is one of your favorite visual artists, and or what is your favorite style of visual art? Impressionism, Monet, Renoir, Pissarro, Van Gogh. Not really an impressionist, but remarkable, John Singer Sargent. Also love Vermeer, Howden, sculptor extraordinaire. How has your knowledge of famous artworks influenced your creative process? I don't think they do. My work is text-driven, or musical. The best I could say is that I go to art museums about twice a month, and I do find the passion behind the work inspiring. How do you view connections to art history in relation to creative writing and screenwriting? There are many cases of this being so. Stephen Sondheim's Pulitzer Prize-winning musical, Sunday in the Park with George, is an example of a creative theatrical work based on the life and work of a painter, Surat. The Girl with the Gold Earring is of course based on Vermeer, both the book and the film. Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris uses Picasso, Man Ray, Dolly, Gauguin and other important artists as the core of his storytelling. Art can inspire a story or concept, and as many times through history. It can be viewed for inspiration by artists and other disciplines, such as screenwriters. I know that famed director Hal Prince, who has won more Tony Awards, Broadway, than anyone in history, always looks through art to find a central image around which he builds the direction of a show. This is not uncommon amongst great directors. Would art history have a direct relationship to creating movies or scripts for movies? Of course, as I said, art design is a very important component in filmmaking. It includes the sculpting of light in relation to film, cinematography, much as a painter uses light. Thanks so much for taking the time to answer our questions, Mr. Harwick. We truly appreciate the effort. Right, folks? Thank you for taking the time to interview me. I hope this helps.
Good night. Folks, join us next week when we interview Anna Balto. Thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of 3D Explorations Online. Take care. This is 3D signing off. Welcome, Anna. It's so good to see you today. Our audience has been flooding me with questions, so if it is all right with you, we will just begin. First question, what do you see as the role of the visual arts in our mass-mediated world and particularly in your profession? Hi, Deline. The main thing is about entertainment. In this society, people turn to technological entertainment, which mixes a priceless foundation of artistic skills with the analytical exploration of different types of media offering a solid background for pursuing careers in multimedia. Artists today work extra harder trying to make the visual art turn into a piece of mediated art. For example, television commercials use types of visual arts to entertain the viewer. It's up to the viewer to decide whether it's entertaining or not. In my profession as a freelance screenwriter something has to give in order to get going. Visual art at times brings my characterizations into bloom. I'm an animated writer so I have to use my internal visual imaginations to get the brain working. Visual art like drawings, paintings, print media, photography, sculptures, bio art and integrated media are almost available everywhere. Looking at the best part of the visual artist. What they're thinking and what they're visualizing is almost contagious, because you want to know what the artist has in mind with its piece. With new communications and media technologies, imagery is almost instantly available. Do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the industry? Provide an example. It could be both negative and positive. Negatively a lot of people will have problems with copyright issues. For example, J.K. Rowling's writer of Harry Potter had almost close stories and want to be followers. However, her rights were intact first, and the other party backed down. Because of the internet almost anything is available to be seen, and people would go to extreme to copy or make similar features of the original artist. Are there particular images that this industry has popularized, and are created? The industry has popularized many entertainment motion pictures. Movie motion is the most common usage of images. Filming and acting are so popularized. Who is one of your favorite visual artists? And or what is your favorite style of visual art? Vincent van Gogh is my favorite painter. His visualization, color, usage of texture and dark ages makes his work one of a kind. He seems to be in deep emotion. Final question, Anna. How has your knowledge of famous artworks influenced your creative process? To me it starts with emotions, how am I feeling for today? And as a creative writer you almost immediately have to use your emotions to create the character that you want to play in your plot. Vincent van Gogh paints with emotion, and that is one that I do with my current scripts that I write. Thanks again for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for having me. We really learned a lot, didn't we, folks? Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another episode of 3D Explorations Online. Take care. This is 3D signing off.